Let's take a look at Syncrest technology and power it delivers to users. We're going to look at it from a special perspective, looking through the eyes of a traditional history-based system user. And as we all know, we all use that type of functionality. So as we all know, usually in the traditional system, models are modified via dimensions applied to sketches. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I select the face and uh, I'm, I'm willing to move it down. I intentionally will suspend all live rules. Live rules is integrated part of uh, Synchrous environment. It's kind of like real-time constraints on a model. I'm going to suspend all of them so we can focus only on dimensioning and selections. So when I start uh, when I start moving this face, you can see I can easily change the position of this face, but I could accomplish exactly the same with changing the dimension on that face. As you can see, exactly the same result. What about if we need to modify multiple uh, pieces of geometry, multiple faces at the same time? Not a problem. I can pick first face, shift select additional face, uh, add dimension in the mix, and uh, if I change the value, we get the result we wanted to. Let's talk about selection methods. Uh, so far I shift selected additional geometry. What about if we really have complex set to select? Well, if I select the first face uh, of my select set, watch closely the bitmap next to my cursor or glyph. When I hit spacebar, I can cycle through different modes, selection modes. Plus minus means I'm in uh, plus or minus mode, which means I can add face or remove face. If I progress to the next step, which puts me in the plus mode or add mode, I can add additional geometry, but I cannot select the geometry already in the select set. Cycling through to the next one by hitting spacebar, I can remove geometry in select set, but I cannot select any geometry that is not part of the select set. And finally, if we add dimension in a mix, again, we can change the value and the system will move those two holes for us. Additional method of selection would be just simply fence selecting geometry. I can fence select a bunch of faces, features of the model, and again add dimension in the mix and adjust all at once. Quite effective way of changing geometry, quite uh, fast. Let's talk about dimensions. If I pick this dimension, you'll notice that I have several additional buttons on the bottom. This way I can control which side of the dimension will affect geometry that it's applied to. If I'm right now, my left arrow is active, it means that I'm going to be changing the position of that hole. If I switch to the right hand arrow, I'm going to be changing the position of that angle face. And now we have this powerful way of controlling symmetry via dimension. I can affect both pieces of geometry at the same time and adjust them simultaneously. This is a really powerful way of using dimension as symmetry constraint when the symmetry is not actually there on a model. Let's go back to, uh, to the first dimension we're trying to modify and let's talk about design intent. Right now what I have in mind, I would like to preserve design intent for this model and that would be for me to have these two faces coplanar and keeping them at the same angle while preserving the dis distance between these three holes and the edge of that face and at the same time I want to lower these faces down meaning bring this edge down and make this face narrower up front so right now if I start modifying this and let's say I make it smaller this dimension you can see that my design intent is not preserved. So this dimension is changed and the hole did not move with that edge. What can I do about it? I can lock dimension. I can select the dimension and lock it. So what that allows me to do, it allows me to preserve the distance. But now the hole is not staying concentric with the corner radii. Well, I can add additional dimension. Remember, we're doing everything with only selections and dimensions. I can add additional dimension and lock it down as well. So what that will allow me to do, it will allow me to modify this distance here and get the result I wanted except a couple extra holes are left behind as well. Well, I can keep adding dimensions. Uh, by the way, I'd like to point out how 
efficiently system allows me to pick radii and uh, while presenting me with the intersection point. So I apply a couple other dimensions, lock them down and now if I pick this face, the opposite face and the dimension, I get the result I wanted. Well, it took me some effort and I'm intentionally doing this way so we we can explore the power of synchronous technology when it's used to the full extent. At this point I'm going to introduce different concepts of relationships. So far we locked down everything with dimensions but I'm going to undo for now and uh, I'm going to add relationships. We have the full panel of different relationships. We're going to focus on easy ones first to understand. So let's say we want a rigid set uh, several faces together. I'm going to pick these all three holes and the back face. What will happen is the system will place a rigid relationship and it will lock down or glue together all these elements. I can examine them via this collector, I can remove certain items if I wanted to. For now I'm okay with what I have and I'm going to add additional relationship. We have additional relationship, coplanar relationship. I'm going to persistently lock that relationship. So I'm going to make sure that this face stays coplanar with this face no matter what. Again we capture that relationship and the relationship collector. And uh, now when I change the value we got what we wanted. But again we've done it kind of a longer way than we, we could uh, because we used relationships and we had to place a couple relationships. Now let's do the same thing except we're going to use live rules this time. I'm going to undo everything I've done and uh, let's try to do exactly the same thing. If you notice I'm not placing any additional dimensions, I'm not placing any additional relationships. I'm going to just uh, unsuspend or restore all the live rules and I'm going to introduce them one by one instead of doing everything at once. So if I start modifying this dimension again you'll notice that I'm getting a result that I got before. 50 millimeters lock dimension preserve that hole from really uh, at the same distance while moving it but it's not concentric with the corner radii. Well I can turn on a live rule which is called concentric faces. Also I can turn on maintain tangent faces since we have tangency between radii and side faces. So now when I start moving this, uh, changing this dimension, you can see uh, the, the hole stays concentric, but we're not getting the result we wanted because uh, the model doesn't stay orthogonal. Well, I can introduce additional live rule, and in this case that would be orthogonal to base, if possible. So what it tells system, it tells it to keep the model orthogonal if it can. Obviously it can in this case, but uh, I'm getting better result, but the middle uh, hole is still uh, not moving together. Well I can add additional live rule maintain complainer axis. So what that mean means that uh, system will maintain alignment between all cylindrical faces aligned along X, Y or Z major axis. And finally we want to have the other face on the other side move as well so we're going to introduce uh, maintain symmetry live rule. And now we're going to have a result that uh, we wanted. So you can see how we accomplished everything we accomplished before by taking extra step. Now we've done everything just by modifying live rules. This is the real power of Synchrus technology. So let's uh, move on and uh, in the next video I'm going to talk about additional tools within Synchrus technology.